my garage door opener that came with the house is a mess. This gear in there looks like it's stripped smooth. Of course, things are unplugged. The circuit board is hanging out of it. And we're gonna replace it. And what we have here, Chamberlain. I don't know if you can see it right there in the corner. It says PD222. One half horsepower. Home link. Compatible. Which I guess that means it'll hook up to a security system or something. Anyway, let's get into it. So I'm going to take the, uh, the slow and thoughtful approach to this. I'm going to open the new one up, look at the instructions, see what all it entails. And if it looks like it's going to work out, I'll just take the old one down, put the new one up, hook up the chain, that kind of stuff, you know. But you know nothing ever goes as planned. So there's no telling what we're going to find when we get in here. <laughs> Hang on, we'll see. Well, I don't know that it's right, and I don't think it's wrong. I decided to just take the whole thing down. I was going to try to utilize some of the stuff that was already here, but I've changed my mind. I figured out the whole complete kit. I might as well use the whole complete kit. And uh, that way everything will match up. So. I disconnected the wires, disconnected the track. Just got to take that part down. And uh, then I can start putting the new one in. All right, now that we're beginning, the first thing it says is to take the front rail, and you can identify the front rail because it has this hole in it. And it says to take these things out of there, set them aside. It also says there's a tab right here, which will go on top. and. A I believe this is going to get bent upwards, but I'm not certain about that yet. I'm going to find out and get back to you on that. Once you get that out, you can see all the way through that. And these holes go from top to bottom. That's going to hold your front pulley or gear, whatever it is. Okay. So it says there's a groove here. You can see that line. There's five of these pieces that all hook together and you make sure that the groove is on the bottom and you slide them all together. Or so it says. It took a little force but I just pushed it in there. And it feels snug. Well there's five of them and it tells you to put <clears throat> four of them together and then you got to do another step. So I'll do that and get back. There's a couple of holes here. It tells you to put a screwdriver in there for a stop. And this is your trolley assembly. This is where you pull your string to disconnect the door so you can open it manually. Make sure these Teflon pieces are all in place. There's four of them. And then slide that on. And then you put your last piece of railing in here. Right, this is the final piece of the track that goes by the motor. And this is what they call a chain spreader. A little plastic thing. And it slides in here like so. And then you put that at the end here and push it in just like all the rest. And that's, that's that. That's that part of it. All right, so the next step is you take these quarter by 20 self-threading screws that are included in the kit, prop your motor up on something soft so it doesn't get scratched up and boogered up. It's on a piece of rug there by that kitty prop up the other end, which you see I have it on a box over there. And it says to take a socket and drive them in. It says do not use any power tools on the motor assembly. You may damage it. 
So if I can do this without getting in the shot. <laughs> well, the way the holes are, I have it upside down. I have the whole thing upside down. here there's one hole here in each piece and they're offset close to the edge and somehow or another I managed to get every other one different than the one before it all right I'll straighten that out and then I'll screw that together That little rail at the bottom thing was deceiving because there's actually one on each side. Well, those rails do not want to come back apart. So I am going to pray that that doesn't cause me trouble after I get this all put together. I could take the time and read through the, all the whole instruction booklet. That just wouldn't be the tough dog way. So, I'm gonna bolt that on there. I've got the chain spacer in place there, chain spreader, pulley spreader, whatever it's called, in place, and I'm gonna bolt it on. Now these holes inside this are not threaded. Using a little quarter inch drive ratchet. And once you get them started, they go real smooth. Just pushing down firmly while I do it. First thread in there. It must be aluminum. Snug that up. And you have a little chain here, it's right here, and it just barely clears that. I guess that's designed to. chain to ride on. The next step is to take your chain, which you can see the chain in the bag there. It is attached to this cable. You slip that cable through there, then you take your pulley, which has already got some grease in there, which is nice, and uh, your one and a half inch clevis pin, and this little key ring type keeper. And put that in there to where that cable can slide on it. It says if it doesn't have grease on it, put some on it. Okay? It says check to make sure it spins freely, which that seems to spin pretty freely. And then it says this little tab here. Uh oh. See, there it goes, bite me in the butt. That little rail, that little tab is supposed to be bent up. So I'm going to have to separate them, those pull, those rails, and flip that over. Or this is not going to be accurate. I knew that was going to bite me in the butt. Alright, so I was able to take a little screwdriver and pry these tabs outward just a little bit. Get a bit of light so you can see them and then it just slid right off now i just got to bend them back in a little bit and put it back in with the right side up and it's this little tab that we're after right here the light's not with today there i think you can see it 
There it is. And you gotta take a screwdriver and bend this up to a 90 degree. Let's see if we can do that before I do anything else. There. I think you can see it sticking up in there now. And so I can bend these tabs back in a little bit. Just a little dab will do you. For the next step, you're going to take this cable and pull it through there, around it, pull it all the way down to the other end of your trolley, and then hook it together with a master leg. There's a little slot in this tab right here for you to push your master leg up through. Put your cable with a loop in on it. Put your keeper on there. And then you got a little, the actual keeper, spring keeper. Just like on your bicycle or mini bike or motorcycle. Take a pair of pliers, squirt it on there like that. All right, the next step, put your screwdriver up. You saw me pull it out of there when I was doing that master link. We'll put it back in there. That'll keep your trolley from sliding forward while you're trying to do the next step. And you take your chain and you pull it tight, the full length of the thing, and wrap it around that chain, that gear down there, making sure it's not twisted anywhere along the way and when you bring it back over here you see that little piece the threaded thing it's got another master link that hooks that chain to it well you put them together slide it through the hole in the trolley there put your lock washer and nut on it and then you start tightening it up and I'm sure if you don't over tighten it but you want it snug Actually, the instructions say at that point just loosely tighten put that nut on there you're not going to be able to tighten it down enough to compress that lock nut or lock washer because there's no backing nut on it they don't give you one for that it says to loosely tighten that nut and remove the screwdriver okay so we've done that I recant they did give an extra nut for that I was thinking that was weird, so I got to take that back loose, put this on there, and then put it back in there. Now, now I can see how that'll hold. I was wondering how they thought that was going to work. It's there. All right, now we'll move forward. Of course, the next step is to tighten the chain, but it says to do it with the trolley in the mid shaft. Well right now you can't do that because of where it is and it, the motor won't turn for you to do that but it says it gives you a quarter inch of play uh, of droop in the middle of that channel. So you're going to want to tighten it up fairly, fairly well. The way I've got this laid out here you can't really see See if this will help. See how see that big old gap where it's drooping way down below the rail? It says that you want about a quarter inch there is all. So I'm gonna tighten it up some and then we'll see what it looks like after. Well, you may not be able to tell the difference, but it's a lot more snug now. And it says there will be a little more droop in the middle of it just because of the nature of it. If it makes weird noises when you're operating it, it may be a sign that it's too tight or too loose. But it says if while you're opening it, if you see a big droop, don't tighten it to get rid of that because you'll get it too tight when it's at the other end. Okay, moving forward.
It says here that uh, you may notice some change group when the door is closed. That's normal. If the chain returns to the position shown when the door is open, do not readjust it. However, in the future, if you ever do make a chain adjustment, make sure you pull the string and release that trolley from the actual door because you'll be trying to raise the door if that trolley is moving and it just causes too much weight and stress on things. So yeah, just make sure your trolley is released as if you're going to open it by hand while you try to adjust your chain. Okay, moving forward. All right, at this point in the game, it tells you to start hanging your brackets on the wall, your header brackets. And it says to find the center of your door vertically, up and down, and draw a line that goes up above that. And it says to screw a 2x4 to a stud. Don't try to hook it into drywall. It won't hold. If you got to use masonry stuff, use masonry anchors. Uh, it says to put lag bolts in your 2x4. Of course, this one's just nailed on there. I'll have to come back later and get some lag bolts to put in that because I don't have any handy. But it does not tell you in the instructions how high to make it. So my advice to you is to make sure that you have it higher than your rails or your spring, depending on what kind of, if you have a spring that goes across the top of the door this way, make sure it's higher than that. And it also says you can set it off to one side or the other if you have to because that spring is in the way. And it says up to four feet. I'm like, really? You can go that far over? But okay. So anyway, I've, uh, I know the other bracket was working and clearing the door, so I'm going to drop down an inch from the holes that were there so I get into new fresh wood. And I've already pre-drilled holes. I'm going to get up there with my drill and shoot some lag bolts in that bracket. Now watch that you get the correct bracket. There's two of them that come with the kit. One of them is for the channel that goes with the chain, and the other one is goes here. And there's a width difference in them. One of them's wider than the other. You want the wide one to go up here to hold your track. I'm going to cheat and try to use my drill to shoot these lag bolts in here. Okay, now I've got the right socket. And these got an arrow on them, which side goes up. You can also hang these on your ceiling if you need to. Just read your instructions. It'll tell you how to go about that. That's the way you choose to go. Step's going to be cropping that whole unit up so I can put the clevis pin into that bracket. And I got to take care that I'll scratch the plastic housing up and break it while doing that. So let me sort that out and we'll do that. It doesn't look very clear, but anyway, I've got it cropped up there. I'm just going to put this pin in it. Keeper in it. And Bob's drunk. Yeah, I did that to keep from scratching it up. So the next step is to be to mount your motor to your ceiling there, and they give you 
an assortment of options to give you these pieces of metal, which is why in instructions it says you need a hacksaw. They give you this Lego kit looking stuff, which you can attach to your rafters or your ceilings, like is up there that you see in the background above my motor. I already had that stuff there, so I utilized it. It comes with these little bolts, quarter 20s, and uh, it also recommends that you open your garage door and put a 2x4 on top of it and make this height in between the garage door and the track there the width of that 2x4. And I don't know if that's going to work out here in my particular case. It looks pretty close. Let's see. Get this over there. It looks like a might be a little bit more than that, but I'm gonna let it go. That's gonna work. Alright, the next step is to put your light bulb in. It says no more than 60 watt because it'll get too hot. And this thing opens up really nice. It's got two little tabs here for your fingers. And you just push on these little black wheels and it just hangs down. It's pretty nice. It says, uh, <clears throat> you can use those incandescent ones too, those little spirally ones. But it says not to use more than a certain wattage of those because they'll get hot. No more than 23 watts or 100, 100 watt equivalent of the fluorescent ones. Do not use halogen and do not use short neck or specialty bulbs. So there you go, 60 watt light bulb will do you just fine. Alright, so now's the time to take your little rope and your little handle and slip them together, tie a knot in there, and slip it together up on your trolley and tie a knot in there. And I was just thinking that this is probably going to drag on the top of the car every time we pull in here. So I may want to readjust that later so it's a little bit higher. I could do it now, but I'm going to wait and see just how much higher it needs to be. I also want Pat to be able to reach it in case she ever needs to. Okay. Moving on. All right, now it says to shut your door, really grab your emergency release handle, and pull it, and pull your trolley forward, and then you're going to hook up your attachments. You've got this straight piece, and this boomerang looking piece. They go on with clevis pins, and when you hook them together, you want to make sure See if I can get this where you can see what I'm saying. To where these ridges are outside of this part. You don't want the the ridges that are sticking out to interfere with this. Smooth side to smooth side, if you will. And you put a clevis pin in there, in here, on this piece, and one on here on the door and then it says to use the holes that are the farthest apart on this when you bolt it to for the most rigidity. Is that all clear? Okay. Because you got a short clevis pin and a long one left if you've done it the way I've done it. on there. There we go. Now take 
in, and we'll line them up, and put the nuts and bolts through them. And again, with the quarter twenties, and the little nuts that have the washers built onto them, with your seven sixteenths. That's all done. And then it says that, see how that uh, emergency release trolley handle is down? And tell that little handle is horizontal. Oh, like that. Okay. You, you might have heard it snap into place. Let me zoom in on it. Do that again. I know the light is funny. Everything's black and it's dark up there. See how it's down? Let's flip it up like that. And then when the garage door is activated, it will engage itself. Or so it says. All right, now we're going to do the fun part. It comes down to the wiring the push button control and the laser eyes and it says for safety reasons make sure your push button is higher approximately five feet high so small children can't play with it uh, I'm gonna put it to where it's handy I don't have small kids running around here and uh, yeah so We'll do that next. On the wall here, by my entrance into the house, is the old button. I figure I'm going to put the new one right there and take that one off. We're not going to use any of that wire or any of those lasers. We're going to use all the new stuff to come with this system. So I'm just going to replace that. All right. Let's see, here's your door switch with the screws to come attached to it. And you'll want this spool of wire, it doesn't have anything on it. The other spools of wire got the laser's eye on them, laser eyes attached to them. So you're going to want to cut strip a quarter inch off the tips of each one of these. But here's a little tip and a trick I'm going to show you. This uh, switch housing has got a little notch out right there where the wire is going to come out of. Well, trim your wires back to where one will come all the way down and then cut the other wire shorter and then trim the edge off so it'll hook on that screw. And I'll show you what I mean. Trim that one off. And you know it'll reach that screw. But you don't need all this extra. So cut that one back and then just trim off the end of it. You don't need all that extra wire in there. And get your screwdriver, loosen them up. Oh, but you do want to pay attention. It does say red and white on here. And I did that backwards. <laughs> See, let me do the mistakes for you. So you don't. So I just have to do the same thing. Pull this back a little further. Oh, no, as a matter of fact, I got it right. By luck. But I did, I got it right. So I'm just going to get a screwdriver, hook them together, and then we'll see what happens from there. All right, there you go. Now you can see what I'm talking about. See your wires. You don't have a lot of extra wire in there. Red stripe goes on one, white goes on the other. That's got to screw to the wall now and run it up somewhere. Run it up to the motor, I guess. All right, so I got the doorbell button screwed to the wall. I've run my wire up. It comes with 
the kit comes with these little staples. Just pull them out of here and use them. Drive them in with a hammer. Run it up the wall next parallel with the other one somewhat. And then fit it over. There it is. Fit it over across the rafters. I don't care about it being real pretty. I just want it to work. Put another staple up right above the unit. And it's dangling up there. You can see it in the corner of the frame there. I gotta cut it off to length and then plug it in the appropriate wires up there. And I'm pulling all the old wires from the old system out. Just there's probably nothing wrong with them. But I'm gonna use all the new stuff. Just because. That's what it's for. Okay, here's a shot of the back of the garage door unit where the wires plug in. The red and white wires from the doorbell button looking switch plugs into them. You strip them off 7 16 of an inch. You push on that with a screwdriver and then slip the wire in and release it. Push in right here at the bottom of it. Why you push the wire in place? Well, my battery died while I was doing that, trying to show you. Basically, those little red tabs underneath the wires you see there, you push in on them, and that opens the hole up. You slide the wire in and you release that little red tab with your screwdriver, that's what you're pushing with, and it grips the wire. And then right above it, see that little plastic thing holding the wires? It's just a little thing made to hold the wires. So, with all that already being there, that's good. Now all I gotta do is put in the eyes, and adjust them, and wire them, and try this thing. Yeah. All right, if your door tracks are like mine, your clips for your safety sensors will just snap onto them like this. Push them, push it hard, it'll snap around the back. Make sure you do it no more than six inches from the ground. I'm just showing you up here because it's easier for me to video it that way. But they actually snap on good, so make sure you got them where you want them when you do it. Then you're going to take your little carriage bolts that came with your kit and a wing nut and your sensor and that carriage bolt will slip right in there. Push it down until it stops. And then after you get your bracket on your door track, it'll fit right together with your bolt sticking out. Put your wing nut on it. And there you go. Make sure they're facing each other. And then you adjust them. And we'll get into that in a minute. Alright, once you get your switches put in, it should look something like this. With your wire going up the wall. Up overhead. And back over to your motor. And there's a black one and a white wire on each of them. Supposedly, yep. You can't see it very well, but there it is. And you uh, you split the ends of them and twist both white wires together and both black wires together and insert them in the back of the motor just like you did the push button. So at this point, it tells you you can plug it in, but do not operate it yet. And you can see the light is on. And then it wants you to adjust your safety beams, which you see over in a corner. And they're adjusted properly when both LEDs are lit up. Like you can see that one's green. And this one is amber. And the amber one is sending the, the signal 
and the green one is receiving the signal. And I actually got lucky and they just happened to be aligned when we turned the power on. So I didn't have to fuss with it. I feel pretty neat about that. Or I feel pretty good about it, thinking that's neat. Programming your Chamberlain garage door opener goes like this. I've already done it, but I'm going to redo it again to show you. I'm going to unplug it, and then I'm going to plug it back in. So right in here you've got two arrow buttons and an uh, adjustment button in the middle. To the left of that is a yellow button. If you push that and hold it, it will erase all your memory codes. So basically what you want to do is hold this middle one until the lights flash and the up button starts flashing. Then you hold that in until your door gets up as high as you want it to go. as I want. Then you push the adjustment button and the down arrow will start flashing. Push and hold that until it's down as far as you want it to go. And then you push the adjustment button. Then the up button starts flashing and just push it and release. So open where you just programmed it. And then the down button will start blinking. And you push and release the down button. And when it stops, your programming is done. See it quit flashing. So the programming is complete. Now you saw my door jerking and popping and that's just because mine needs lubrication and fine tuning. Or you heard the door popping and jerking and everything when it went down. That's just because that door needs some tweaking itself. It doesn't want to go up and down smooth. But yeah, that's how you program it. And uh, I was going to say earlier that if you have trouble with your with your sensors not lining up just keep playing with them uh, go back and read your instructions and good luck to you I hope you found this video helpful and uh, maybe some of the tips and tricks I did will help you keep from making some of the same mistakes I did and uh, you can enjoy your new garage door opener as I plan to. So thanks for watching and y'all take care and we'll see you around here at Tough Dog's Place. Cheers. Wait. I can't even see him in the viewfinder. It might come out in the video, but. Flip that switch off and see if he flies away. Right here behind this lampshade. Oh, there he goes.
Now he's like, what the hell? Oh, let's go over here. Yeah, when you turn the lights off, he goes away from it. <laughs> 